ask our carbide rate um, provision maximizes performance. If we use carbide rate blends with glucose, maltodextrin, fructose, we can actually absorb more carbide rates during exercise. What are the practical limits for carbide rate intake during exercise? Yeah, so if you use a mix of different carbohydrates, we call them multiple transportable carbohydrates, um, you can get very high absorption rates, oxidation rates, and that has been shown to result in better performance. Um, it is important to realize that that only happens when you take on board a lot of carbohydrates. So if you take less than 60 grams of carbohydrate per hour, you don't see these effects. So you only see it when you push the carbohydrate intake uh, higher than 60 grams per hour, but that's actually quite a large amount to take on board during exercise, especially if you're not used to it. So the challenge is that when you take these large amounts that uh, you get some stomach discomfort, uh, maybe some intestinal cramps, um, especially if you're not used to it. So the, uh, the only way around that really is to get used to it and use this practice in training. And so if you're planning to do this in a race, don't do it in the race for the very first time. Always take this situation to a training situation, and do it like once a week or something so that your body is used to taking on board these large amounts of carbohydrate. And glucose availability uh, in the mouth seems um, to directly um, improve um, performance capacity. So under what condition would already a little carbohydrate um, have a practical relevance to improve performance? In some situations you don't even have to ingest the, uh, the carbohydrate to get the effect. But this is very specific to shorter duration events. So most of the studies have um, investigated something around 60 uh, minutes of, of exercise. Maybe you see the effects from about 30 minutes up to 75 minutes, but it has to be an all-out effort for that uh, period of time. And then you can get with a simple mouth rinse, you can get these uh, performance effects. Uh, so you can choose to rinse your mouth with carbohydrate drink or you can drink little bits of carbohydrate and that uh, should help your uh, performance. And does this work only with glucose or also with other sweetener? It, um, it doesn't work with any sweetener because in the studies that uh, we did, we've used the sweetener as the placebo and carbohydrate improves performance compared to that placebo. Um, so it is very specifically an effect of carbohydrate and not of the sweetness. We've also done these studies with carbohydrates that have no taste and you can still see the, uh, the effect. And in fact, there are also studies that show that um, if you give a carbohydrate that is not sweet, it uh, activates certain areas in the brain. Um, so it's, it's definitely a carbohydrate effect and not a sweetness effect. And what is your uh, personal practical recommendation for carbohydrate intake during exercise for athletes? Well, it's a, that's, a, uh, that's a long question because um, it, the, the answer is it depends. It depends on what level of athlete you are and it depends on the type of event that you do. So uh, generally, the higher level of athlete you are, you probably need a little bit more carbohydrate, but the event duration also matters. So if the event is very short, um, you need smaller amounts of carbohydrate than when your event is very long. When the event is two and a half hours or longer and you really want optimal performance, then you probably have to push the carbohydrate intake as high as 90 grams of carbohydrate per hour. Use carbohydrates that contain like multiple transportable carbohydrates. Um, if you are um, an event that is one to three hours, you can probably get away with about 60 grams uh, per hour. If it's shorter, you can go to 30 grams per hour. So it, it really depends on uh, what event you're looking at and also what level of athlete you are. And is there also a difference if you consume carbohydrates during exercise as a solid food or as a liquid? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. We've recently done those uh, studies where we compared uh, drinks versus gels uh, versus bars. And it turns out that it doesn't uh, really matter uh, how the carbohydrate is delivered. So gels with water are almost exactly the same as a sports drink. If you give carbohydrate bars with water, that is almost exactly the same as sports drinks as well. Um, but I think it is important that these bars that you choose, or any solid food that you choose, 
is low in fat, low in fiber, and hopefully also low in protein. Because I think as soon as you increase the content of those ingredients, you're going to slow down the delivery of the carbohydrate.